welcome to another episode of the Goodman and Hummel podcast. I'm Jeff Goodman. Uh, Robbie Hummel could not be with us for this one, and and, and he feels terrible. He's actually going to tape uh, something because we've got a great, great episode, a special episode uh, today, and it is a tribute to uh, the one and only Mike Bray, Notre Dame head coach who announced his retirement at the end of the season on Thursday. And this is a guy who, honestly, I've known a long time and not only a great coach, but maybe the greatest human being I've met doing this job. And that's there's a lot of great ones. He's right there up there, maybe at the top. Um, I've always said if there's somebody I, I want to have beers with, too, other than Bob Huggins as a head coach, it's probably Mike Bray. Uh, he built Notre Dame into a consistent uh, NCAA tournament team. You know, they went one step away from the Final Four a couple different times in 26, uh, 15 and 16. He found guys. He developed them not only as players, uh, but as people. And we got a bunch of those dudes on today to help pay tribute to the one and only Mike Bray. And uh, I'm going to start with a guy who um, I know well, obviously works for ESPN. Everybody else knows well, um, a, a foundational piece of everything that Mike Bray built at Notre Dame, and that's Jordan Cornette. Uh, Jordan, thanks for uh, for joining us here. And I just kind of want to honestly give the floor to you guys and tell stories about Mike Bray, who you guys knew well, because he's going to be missed. He is going to be missed in, in college hoops. No doubt, Jeff. I'd like to thank you for doing this, man. Uh, we spoke last night when the news came across the wires and you had this great idea of getting some of the guys together to, to talk about Coach Bray. And, of course, he's still alive, so it's not like we're remembering yes. a life here. Uh, <laughs> but we are talking about his Notre Dame life, with, which after 23 seasons will come to a close. Um, and, and it's been an incredible 23 years of overachievement, quite frankly. Um, but I think one of the greatest things in talking with Coach that he felt like he achieved was the bond that a bunch of these faces on here share. Some guys I never shared a floor with. Uh, but share a bond with. I mean, I'm looking at guys like Scott Martin, Kyle McElarney, uh, Zach Hillsley, and Eric Atkins. I, I never shared the floor with those guys. Those guys are my brothers, some of them close friends. Um, and, and that's what this is about for us. It's coming together and appreciation for the lessons we've learned from Coach Bray, uh, the laughs we've had with him, the wins, the losses, uh, but the bond. And just to be able to kind of look back and reflect on what he's meant to us, what he's meant to college basketball. And Honestly, guys, just for the next 30 minutes here or so, we'd love to share some stories about who Coach is. For those who don't know, I, I think that's what the field does as a great podcast. Uh, Robbie's lazy ass not being here. Uh, we won't hold that against him. Um, but, you know, for, for people who just think Coach is just this, this funny guy, this loosest coach in America, so much more than that. Uh, some of the guys who are <clears> – some of my OGs are on here, and, and Dave Graves, who was one of my captains, Matty Carroll, who's one of my captains – uh, Martin Inglesby, who was one of their captains and teammates and was one of my coaches, uh, his name's swirling around it a lot. We won't mention any of that right now, uh, but I'd love to start maybe with you, Dave, uh, what coach meant to you, because uh, I know he meant a great deal. Got to unmute you, buddy. Dave. Yeah, there you go. Dave, unmute. My bad. I'm a rookie. My bad. Uh, you know, the thing about Coach and Martin kind of probably could touch on this is, you know, we, we obviously had three three goes of head coaches during our term with uh, Coach McLeod, Coach Doherty. And then when when Mike came in, it, you know, the thing that was so uh, – Coach McLeod was such a professional. You know, he was in the NBA for 28, 30 years. Never wanted to embarrass you. It was very, uh, very calm all the time, even though we were losing. Uh and then when Matt came in, it was kind of a shock to the system. I mean, he was he was in your face. He was brash. He was uh, very aggressive. And then when Mike came in after, what, 24, 36 months later, he had such a cool a calmness and coolness about him that was kind of refreshing. Uh, and Martin can speak on it a little bit more. I know, he's, I know he had to re-recruit Martin a little bit after Doherty's time uh, at Notre Dame. But the thing that with Mike that I've, I've always – kind of said about a lot with a lot of people was his his awareness of his groups was something that was that's really unique in college basketball um we were he knew we were kind of an older group and that's kind of possibly how he got his steam at Notre Dame with kind of get old stay old um but he didn't really mess with us a whole lot which was kind of which was kind of unique you know obviously we had Troy Murphy uh, all-american 
Uh, we had some, we had some very good players and, and uh, coach came in and he didn't really do a whole lot when it came to messing things up. We were kind of a self-sufficient group. We had to be. Uh, Tony Rolinski was kind of our, our core guy because he was with us the entire time as coaches were coming and going. Uh, but man, his awareness of, of, of treating us as, as men uh, was, was great. Uh, I remember going on trips to Hawaii and Miami and he'd kind of give us a day off, you know, when we got there all the time. He's like, don't, don't talk to me. You all go do your thing, get it out of your system. And then it's a business trip. So he kind of knew we were 21 year old, 20 year old you know, kids. He kind of gave us our time. And then we were, we were to work. That's what we did. And, and I just really appreciated his, his approach. Um, he treated us respectfully and as, as, as men. And, um, uh, I think in, in turn, uh, that's why we have all these people on this podcast. Is, you know, we, we truly, truly love him and love his approach and, and how he uh, he dealt with us, which was which was uh, unique, uh, respectful, and um, he kind of gave us a little bit of a rope, but he knew when to jerk it. Uh, that was the other thing about him that was kind of cool. He he kind of knew when we were getting a little loose. Uh, he kind of get us back into back into form. Moose, Maddie, feel free to feel free to jump in. I know you guys' experience are similar to to DGs, but maybe differ just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was uh, spot on, Dave. Um, you know, obviously, coaches impacted all of us in so many ways. Um, you know, kind of the self proclaimed loosest coach in America. You know, he had that way about him. Played up in the media, um, and you know, he made basketball fun. I think for us as early first couple of years, um, he kind of got us on the right track and, and gave us the opportunity, um, you know, to play, to have fun. We were excited to come to practice every day. You know, I think the one thing that I always, as I think about coach is, you know, his relationships, caring about the people, caring about the university, but he is one of the most competitive motherfuckers that I've ever been around. And, uh, you know, I don't think people talk about that as much you know, you see that behind the scenes and maybe in staff meetings or in the locker room, but he, he is a relentless competitor and a winner and, you know, putting uh, the right pieces in place at the right time throughout the course of the season to help a team win and have success and tinker and tweak uh, through the ebbs and flows of the college basketball season. And um, I think he's a master at it. He's a master at it, getting a team to play together. Um, and you know, I've learned so much from him as a player and as a coach that I take with me every day. So, uh, you go on and on about the stories and the times we had. I need a moments. story though, Martin, give, give me, yeah. you were with him more than anybody else here, you know, as, yeah. as an assistant to, and played for him for a long period of time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's, again, there's plenty of them. I, mean, I know, you know you I know there touched are. on it quickly, but in 2015, you know, going down to, uh, Greensboro, the ACC tournament, bringing his Notre Dame team as an ACC guy and to go through Duke and Carolina to win an ACC championship down there. And I remember when we were getting it done, he looked up and said, like, look at all that Carolina blue walking out of the building as the Irish just kicked their ass. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that is uh, so, such a proud moment, I know, for him uh to be able to take our team down to that country and to get it done and win a championship um uh something that i'll always remember and how he he reveled in that matt yeah i'd have to agree uh with dg and with moose i mean i think they describe coach uh perfectly i mean he uh he was the best you know i played for a lot of coaches you know in my career especially professionally and uh, he by far uh was my favorite uh for a lot of reasons and a lot of ways, but, you know, when I think back, like Martin said, um, it was just fun. I mean, he found a way, obviously he was extremely competitive. We had good teams, we were winning, uh, but he, he instilled a, a, a sense of fun and joy in the game of basketball that is hard to do. I think at that level all the time, um, but that's just who he was. And you talk about competitiveness. I think, you know, we had games where you might've felt like we were out of it, didn't have a chance. But he stayed positive, I think, because he was so competitive that he found a way to, to keep us playing hard, keep us working, keep us believing. Uh, and I think he could just read the room. You know, Dave talked about reading. Jordan talked about, you know, the, finding the right ingredients for each team, reading people, having a way to uh, ability to connect with his guys. 
That's incredible. It's hard to do. You know, when you're in a job like that, you're the head coach at Notre Dame, there's pressure to win. But he just found the right ingredients, I think, with all these groups over these 20 plus years uh, that just made him so successful and these teams there and guys so successful. Um, and I just had fun. You know, I think about that. I mean, I enjoyed my experience playing for him more than anything else. Uh, and, and we have a lot of stories. I think of a lot of stories looking at the guys on this on this call right here. Some we can't share on this uh, today. Uh, that might have to be over a few beers. But he was. You know, the first day I met him my sophomore year, uh, he was a guy that, like, I felt like I wanted to go have a beer with and just talk sports and hang out. Uh, but you knew, like, he, he really cared for you as a person, you know, more than basketball. Uh, I think of a couple of times, maybe after a big win, maybe a late night, uh, that maybe we we call Coach Bray late at night, you know, and it was the type of guy that like you probably wouldn't call your mom or dad because you didn't want them to get mad at you, but you had such a unique relationship that you could call your coach, knowing that he's going to say you better stay out of trouble, but have fun and celebrate, and let's get to work tomorrow. Uh, but he was that kind of guy, you know. So just kind of the memories uh, of him knowing he had your back, he was going to push you. But as a friend, he was going to be there for you. And what I think is so unique, he came down to Charlotte uh, about a month ago to recruit a kid uh, here in Charlotte. And I came to the high school practice to see coach. And uh, we talked for about an hour. And it was like it was 20 years ago. You know, it just hasn't, it doesn't matter. It's like the guys on this call, your brothers, your teammates, you know, you could go 20 years and everybody, it's like it, nothing changed, right? You pick right off. COVID happened. You don't see guys for three years. You see Coach Bray. And you're laughing, you're telling stories, and it was more than basketball, you know, to him. And he made it that for his for his players, which was, you know, really special. I think at the end of the day. Yeah, Maddie, it, it's funny when you mention that. I kind of think about you know how relatable Coach was, and Terrain. I'd love to hear you jump in on this one, but he was also relatable because he could he could give it back to you, right? He could talk smack. I mean, he was quick witted, and he yes. could always check you. And I see guys laughing because Coach was cool like that. Like he he. You know, you you took that leash that Dave talked about. You took it too far. He'd reel you back in. I think of a time quickly, a, a story of mine, and I wasn't nearly as good as the majority of the guys on here. Some of you guys, I could, I could probably give it to you, but the majority are way better than me. Carmelo Anthony gave me the business one game. I mean, he gave everybody the business. Syracuse was at Notre Dame. And uh, the game was like on a, a Tuesday night. Wake up the next morning, and I get a, a note from Karen. I need to meet with Coach in his office. And I'm thinking – well, coach can't be mad at me that Melo gave me 30. I mean, what did he expect? It's a mismatch. I didn't go out the night before. I didn't get in any trouble. He and still won, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I go to coach's office, and coach goes, you know, Jordan, and he throws me the South Bend Tribune. And I'm like, well, my name's not in there for doing anything wrong besides giving up a bunch of buckets. And it's a couple of quotes, some salient ones I gave after the game about, you know, what happened and maybe what went wrong because, Bogo, we actually did lose that game. Oh, and Coach yeah. goes, you see these quotes right here? They're great quotes. If you could play the damn game as well as you talk about the damn game, you'd be an All-American. And I walked out of there and I thought to myself, I'm going to be in TV. That's what I'm going to do. And I think it backfired for Coach, but that's the kind of guy he was. He would check you. He'd put you in your place. And K-Mac, Turin, I know you guys got some stories of, you know, the back and forth. Just you'd be like, oh, Coach is cool with it. I got one good story. I, I remember back my senior year, you know, at Notre Dame, I lived on campus, which is unique compared to a lot of other colleges. And uh, I had four roommates that weren't my teammates, regular students at Notre Dame. And so I came home one night um, and, and I saw my roommates sitting there and they kind of had a look on their face. I was like, hey, what's going on with you guys? And they said, we just got back from dinner. I said, where'd you guys go? They said, oh, Coach Bray took us out to dinner. And I'm thinking, Coach Bray took <laughs> you guys out to dinner? And I said, why'd he do that? He says, or they all said, well, he just wanted to make sure that, hey, we know we kind of have the party house here, but even though this is the party house, we got to let you get to bed by midnight on game nights, and he's going to take care of us. So he had a funny way to connect with people. He was doing things behind the scenes that we didn't even know about. <laughs> Turin, Turin, what do you get? I mean, I remember your recruitment well, being that I covered it back in the day, and we weren't too far away from each other. Um, everybody was after you. Was there something even like throughout your recruitment that Bray did to be able to get you there? Yeah, so he just found, Coach Bray found a great way to not only connect with his players, but just connect with people. You know, I think one thing that really stood out to me is that uh, him and Coach Lowe, they were actually recruiting me during the during 9-11. 
and all the flights were canceled and they actually drove out and um you know they still had they still made the the recruitment and they drove back actually Muffet McGraw was recruiting as well and they all drove back to Notre Dame together which was amazing and I think that really stood out to me uh, for the dedication that he had as a coach you know and I think that he just was very relatable you know I, I probably could have went anywhere I wanted and I was just drawn to to Coach Bray and the coaching staff and, and drawn to Notre Dame and um, I had an amazing experience there. And, um, you know, all his players, we've become family. Coach, and one thing I can say about Coach, Coach Bray is he has the best memory ever. Coach Bray never forgets anyone. He still asks about my mother. He asks about my friends that he might have met at one time. And he still asks about them. And I think that's very special you know, in, in a person and in a coach. Yo, Terrence, man, it's, it's, it's T. Jones, man. Be, be honest, I, I I locked you down that recruiting visit. Like, did Coach Bray did all the heavy lifting early on, but you, you know <laughs> there's the job done on recruiting visits, man. I was the closer for Coach Bray. So anybody yeah. he knew he really wanted to send to T. Jones, I, I'll get it done. <laughs> it ain't about basketball. It's about, about the other stuff. You know what I mean? Hey, like, hey, like Maddie said, we can't talk about some of those stories. Nah, uh, nah, nah, nah. Nah. Why not? He's done now. You can say whatever the hell you want now. <laughs> No, we had we had an amazing time there. We had an amazing time there, you know, and and um, you know, Maddie and T Jones, D Mill, uh, Jordan Cornette, they really um I was one of the young guys. I was actually Coach Bray's very first recruiting class, you know, and so for me it was a great experience to go there first year. It was it was amazing. We went to the Sweet 16 and you know, it was like where where players became brothers, you know, we're, we're all still in touch today. And I think that's one of the things that Notre Dame really instills is that brotherhood. You know, and I think Coach Bray being there for 23 years, um, he, he was very, he was very instrumental in, um, in, in, in helping with that, you know, because he's really become family to all his players as well. Well, it's amazing to me that, again, I, I talked to Jordan last night on, on a layover at, I don't know what time it was, nine, nine o'clock at night. And we already got all you guys together. And one of the things why a lot of other players couldn't make it at Notre Dame, it's a little bit different than some other schools. Uh, a, a lot of you dudes are, and I'm not saying you guys aren't, that you're on here now, but a lot of you dudes are making a ton of money doing stuff all over the world. Uh, Jordan, I know mentioned Rob Kurz is in Dubai or something right now, right? Yeah, yeah, Jeff, that, that's accurate. And, you know, the thing is, you got 14, 15 guys on here right now, yeah. uh, guys that played huge roles in coaches' success. Um, we're all eager to jump on. And, and you're looking at guys with families, you're looking at husbands, fathers, employees of companies, some running their own businesses, some leading programs to wins on a weekly basis in college hoops. Some guys, agents on here, I mean, you could run the gamut. Um, but the guys who even couldn't get on here because there's several text chains that kind of weave through the generations from coach. Everybody said, oh man, it's never going to be the same. I love that guy. I wish I could do it. I can't, but it's generated. Some of the stories you're eager to get here, Jeff, that guys aren't so willing to share. It's generated the sharing of those stories uh, woven through those chains. And, and the thing we that gotta I got to get a couple of them though, we got to get a couple that, that <laughs> You know, somebody's willing to throw out there. Hummel's going to have a good one that that he he'll record and we'll put in the pod. It's pretty funny. Uh, Scott knows what that one is, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> it was an ill-advised text message. I'll give it a tease uh, from Bray to Hummel that wasn't supposed to go to Hummel. Okay, you guys can only <laughs> imagine about. what what it was. The coach is uh, never very technologically savvy. That that makes sense. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that K, happen. K Mac, what K Mac, what do you got? I mean, you gotta have something here. You blew up kind of late. You know, I remember your whole recruitment as well. You you weren't you weren't a guy that was on the, the, the circuit heavy early and you blew up, but give me give me something on Bray that maybe hasn't been talked about already. <laughs> um so we went to uh we went to Ireland my, my senior year, uh, going into my senior year. And uh, I, I just turned 21. And as everybody knows on this call, the good Irish Catholic boy that I am, I abstained from um, 
drinking until I was 21. Um, so we are in Ireland and um, a couple of us are doing our own thing. And we walk into the hotel and Coach Bray is in the lobby. And um, we're like, we're freaking out. You know, we don't want him to see us. Um, he gets, he kind of sees us in his peripheral vision and we like make eye contact. And he just does this like little head turn. He turns away and we run into the, into the lobby and we get back into our hotel room nice and safe. But, um, you know, that among, among others, we have plenty of stories that we um, aren't comfortable sharing on, on the social media channels. But I'll say this about coach. Um, he knew how to coach each one of us. Um, he had, has such a good pulse on who we are, what buttons to push, what strings to pull. Um, of course, you know, the story is out there. When I when I got suspended from Notre Dame my my sophomore year, um, all of a sudden I got suspended and my recruitment opened up again because there was um, a lot of things going on at the time. But I was thinking about going elsewhere. I was thinking about transferring. Um, and Coach Bray flew to, to New York, to Staten Island, and he sat in – my living room with my parents and talked for for hours um, with me and my parents. And it was not it was not um, come back to Notre Dame and uh, be first team all Big East and, you know, resurrect your basketball career. It was it was just him pouring his heart out as a father and as a friend that kind of got me and my family back on board to to go back to Notre Dame. He's a master um, at coaching the individual, as I, as, as I said. He knew every single one of us. He knew um, how to motivate us. He knew, he knew when, to, uh, when to turn it up a little. He knew when to throw us out of practice. Um, and I think, I, I, I think he's the best at that across, across the college of basketball. No, no question came back. That makes me think about a guy like Russell Carter, a dear friend of a lot of us on here. I think Russ got thrown out of more practices than he actually played in. And you know what happened to Russ? <laughs> he became an all-conference player in the Big East. And he's he's turned into, not turned into, he always was a great young man. He's turned into a great father and all these things. Coach knew how to why was how to how to motivate a guy like Russ right? because everybody's different. And Russ became one of the best players in the Big East. I think about some of the teams I played on. I'm not sure if Maddie was on his team. TJ, I know you and Turin were. Moose, you might have been coaching during this time on the staff with Coach. But we had gone on a losing streak, and Coach said, you know what? You guys don't deserve the locker room. Give it to the kids in school. Like, kick them out of the locker room. Like, put them in the in the whatever the auxiliary, like, locker room was for kids to change for, like, intramurals. He's like, no, no, no. Let the undergrads have the locker room. Let them use the TVs and have the Gatorades and have the leather couch. These dudes are lame. They don't belong in here. And he kicked us out. He kicked us out for a solid week, I think it was, TJ. Was it about a week? Yeah, I think it was about a week, man. It's <laughs> funny. I actually forgot about that till you just said it, but uh, but but, but Coach <laughs> Inglesby has adopted that as well. We, we had to kick a couple of our teams out over here at Delaware, too, guys. <laughs> bullshitting out there, you know, not not doing what it takes. And, you know, he, he, he'll he tell me, you guys are poor mother. He'll, he'll take – Coach Inglesby took it up a notch. He'll take their practice jerseys. They had to come <laughs> in out of here and, and wear their own clothes from home and all of that and, like, earn – you know, the right to be on the court and the right isn't to have the locker thing? room and stuff. Wait, isn't it? Did he learn that from Kay? Yeah. I it, you know. yeah. <laughs> and he was the only one, by the way, still think about this. Coach K, all he's brought in pretty much, I think through his entire career, Martin can correct me on this, was former Duke guys on his staff. Bray was like the only dude that was a non Duke guy, not in the family that he brought on the staff. What does that say about Mike Bray? Like that's yeah. crazy to me. I, I think that's that's worth noting here too, Jeff. Is he always had an appreciation, a respect from where he came from, and he took obviously a lot from Coach K. He'd be dumb not to. Uh, but Coach was adamant. He wanted to stand on his own too. I, I don't know how much Coach loved the oh, he's a Duke descendant. He's a Duke disciple. Like he became the winningest coach at Notre Dame. Like at some point, you detach yourself from that and go, this guy's his own entity. And I think that was a big part of him. Like, okay, I learned here. This was the breeding ground, but now my, my, my own enterprise and now I'm doing my own thing. And it cannot be overstated enough 
it's really hard to win at Notre Dame. And yes, the expectations aren't final fours. Dude delivered two elite eights back to back. Dude won an ACC title at a place where they talk football 365. Lucky for him this year, they talk football 365. But for the majority of the time, this guy did things where it was literally water and people were getting full off of wine. And that was pretty incredible. Jeff. Yeah. I'll tell you what it says about, about Coach K that he hired Coach Ray. It says them dudes at DeMath were pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> the dudes from the mountain, they've, had, they've had some guys come through there haven't they no no doubt no doubt um you got hey, it jeff, I, like jeff i've got a little good, uh, go ahead i've got a little fun fun one that uh, i think maddie and and moose will, it'll, it'll resonate with them because i think i was walking over to joyce with them when coach got hired uh day one uh, you all remember the old Joyce Center, the way that the parking came. We had that little arm, and the coaches parked right right in front of the old offices there. It's all been redone now. But we were walking over for the press conference. And, Maddie, you might remember this. I think you and I and Moose were walking over together. But uh, all these coaches, you know, coach, they all have nice cars. I mean, they all have, like, you know, Range Rovers and Mercedeses and things like that. So, I mean, they're really, really nice cars. Well, in the head coaching spot was a Ford Escort. And he, he pops out of the car. We, he pulls in right. We're walking in into the, into the thing. He pops in. He's like, crazy. It's the only thing they had, man. It's the only thing they had. We had, we had to get here. And I was like, man, it, it, I liked him at that moment. And, uh, cause he was just such an egoless. He was the, he's the most egoless coach in college sports period. There, there's not a coach in the world and that, that would, that would do that. They would, they would pitch a fit, you know, about that. But he, he rolled in in a Ford Escort and hit that little beeper and he was perfectly comfortable with it. And, and we, used to, give, we used to give him shit about it, Dave, and he said it gets good gas mileage. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that, that's that's Mike Gray to a T right there. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, are you saying it's cheap? Drum, are you it, saying it's yeah. cheap? I think it was a Honda Pilot, but I mean, he, whatever he, like, it was, literally, it was something. It was it was a, a four cylinder. I can promise you that. And for him, it got from point A to point B, B and it didn't cost them too much money. <laughs> hey, hey, Jeff, you got you got one guy joining who's actually got his his jersey in the rafters. He might be at a. Share, share a story of, yeah. of his own here. Luke Heron Goody just popped And I on. know Heron Goody's got, you know, he's working all day, so I'm glad he could jump on here. Uh, one of my favorite kids, one of my favorite players I've ever uh, covered. Uh, Luke, I know you're, are you on, uh, can you get on Zoom on video fresh, at all? Or fresh no? out of a meeting, so he should be dressed to the nines. Let's see what. I mean, what you should look doing. good right now, Luke. Come on. Not yeah. like when I saw you. <laughs> You can't hide money. Well, let's see if he can pop on here. Luke, can you hear us? All right, he's connecting. I don't think he's connected yet. So we'll we'll try to get right. Luke on. And, Jeff, I got a I got a quick story for you, real yeah. quick. Go ahead. Um, you know, you talk about coach and, and the type of coach that you want to lay it on the line and run through a brick wall for. <clears throat> we were in uh in Blacksburg, Blacksburg, Virginia, playing V Tech, and we clinched the Big East title. So a couple guys on this call here, DG, Moose, T. Jones, and um, we clinched a Big East. We decided to go out that night to have a little fun. And obviously that's before uh, camera phones and everything going on like today. So a little bit different. But um, we were flying commercial, didn't kind of have the private plane like everybody has now probably at Notre Dame. And uh, our bus is leaving at 430 to go to the airport. And I remember us getting out of the cabs, the taxi cabs at 429, walking onto the bus. And I'm like, we're done. Like, we're in so much trouble. We miss curfew. And as we get up the bus, I kind of catch Coach Bray's eye. And as soon as we walk on, he just turns and looks out the window and didn't say a word. <laughs> and that was it. So that's the kind of guy he was. Hey, Heron Goaty, I, I don't even recognize you. Like, seriously, I do not recognize you at all. You've cleaned up well. Is that a compliment? Is that a compliment? <laughs> yeah, you like look at you. You clean up. I try. I try. Good to see you, Jeff. You too. You too, man. I miss you. Miss you. Uh, glad you're doing well. Glad you could join us. I know you probably are in and out of meetings here. So let's get to you right away. Give me your favorite Mike Bray story, if you have one, or your overall thoughts. It can be anything. A lot of people have given their thoughts so far. I would like a great story if you got one, but where, the floor is yours. 
Well, you put me on the spot here right away. Um, you're going to have to give me a second to come up with a uh, – most of the stories I probably have aren't uh, – appropriate for this uh platform, all you guys but, uh, all you guys but it's true noticed. jeff it's true i mean that's I coach he's authentically himself we can't share all that well, stuff. I, I know that's he the has, beauty he of has some right? one-liners he had some one-liners that we still we still use to this day and which are are there I mean, I I can, I can help maybe I don't know some over here a little bit if anyone wants to kind of get things kicked off right go ahead so, yeah all right so like these guys said, most of the stories can't be repeated. You know, language is very specific to his humor. Okay. Um, but one for us, you know, we talked about, you know, getting kicked out of our locker room, put into the, the crap locker room. But what's the best is what happens in that locker room, right? Because he's, he's mad at us. He's trying to dress us down. So I remember we had come off a streak of wins. Like we played really well at Syracuse one year. We're riding high. I think we set a record for points. A um, couple of games after that, you know, maybe lost a couple in a row. So he throws us in, the, throws us in this junk locker room and we're watching film on maybe like the first TV ever invented. And, uh, you know, he's going through, he's yelling at Colin Falls for taking crap shots. He's, you know, there was a close up on Russ at some point, uh, which is bad body language. He's like, Russ, you know, what, were you, were you, what were you mad about there? Were you mad that Colin didn't pass you the ball? He's like, yeah, coach, I was he's like, you're an asshole, you know, like grow up and then he saved the best for me which he always did I was like the punching bag at the end of the rants but uh you know I had a pretty good game at Syracuse as everyone did but he was like Zach you left your family jewels back at the carrier dome like you need to call the janitor and have him FedEx back to you um and he kept that bit going for 10 years at my wedding in 2019 he brought a FedEx package with an IOU for the family jewels so he uh you got to like a guy who's committed to the bit because um, he certainly came through a decade later and finished it off. So he had that kind of humor and you couldn't really be mad at him either because it was always just kind of funny and gave us stories. So he always let it rip like that. I feel like I feel like we missed the boat a little bit. Me, Zach, uh, Goaty, the uh, taking a shirt off in the Maui. I don't know if it, I don't know if anyone's here from that team. Right. EA, you were there. Yeah, Eric was. Right, I was Eric. Staff. I was on staff during that, yeah. yeah. What, what what was that? Go ahead. Re, recreate that, relive that moment. <laughs> well, I mean, first it was a crazy comeback win uh, against Wichita State. Um, but, uh, I mean, right before he he, do, he doesn't tell anybody before he does any of this kind of stuff. Like, we're, we all just met as a staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all high-fiving. Search is just coming off as he's talking. And then he just pushes us and moves us out the way. And then he just runs in there. And it just happens. <laughs> so like, yeah, he doesn't like, he's not letting us know like, hey, here, here's this coming. No, he actually took off his shirt, pushed us out the way, ran in the room, and then we get that viral clip right there. Hey, be before, can I ask a question? Anybody can jump in on this. We've seen Jay Wright retire a year ago um, at 60, you know, prematurely for, for what most people thought, right? Uh, because the, the world's changing. College basketball's changing with transfers, with, you know, NIL, all that stuff. How much, and anybody can weigh in, I don't care who, how much do we think that pushed him out? Or was it, again, just he was ready? I think he was kind of ready. I thought he was ready a couple of years ago. And then he had the NCAA tournament team last year. And I almost privately was hoping he'd go out after last year, after an NCAA tournament uh, berth. But how much do we think this is the right time because of the way college hoops has changed? I'll go ahead and start, Jeff, because I had a lot of these conversations with Coach, full disclosure. Obviously, for the sake of uh, uh, friendship, I won't share everything that was said. But, you know, I don't think it drove him away. Again, he's going to have a press conference here and talk in just a little bit. I don't know when you're going to release this thing out. But he'll address some of that stuff. How honest he is with everybody, we'll find out. But – you know, NIL maybe a little bit, but 23 years winning as coach at the place. Sometimes you just say, my work here is done. Love South Bend, but it ain't South Beach. And as the guy's getting a little bit older, I think he's, you know, Kyle, his son is following in his footsteps as a high school football coach down there in Florida. I believe it's at IMG still. He wants to be around family more. He wants to relax a little bit. I think he wants a schedule that's not as demanding because he's achieved and he's achieved at the highest level. He can walk out now. I'll tell you this, being in TV, I've gotten so many texts and calls like, so what do you think? Like, what do, what do you think? When is he, what TV gig does he take? He'll be in high demand. 
I just don't know necessarily if all the coaching is out of him. I would think so, but I know he's eager to be on the beach for a little bit and kick back and have a couple of those pops and no better guy to be around, as we've all said, uh, to have a few drinks and then kind of reassess. He'll be on the beach in Delaware, no doubt, right? I got I got a good one-liner that I'm sure everybody on here has, has heard, um, but I know this would be specific. It was after our, well, we were on our eight game winning streak my sophomore year. Uh, we go to Villanova, we're at Villanova. Um, we're down like 20 at the half. We're getting, we're honestly getting killed. Um, he walks in the locker room and Coach Bray does a great job. Like, like I think, I, I forgot who said it, but just like knows what to say to kind of push your buttons. And um, he kind of just starts clapping, like, like a real light smile. And he's like, this is a good run guys. And, every, and like, he's just like, this is good. You guys did a good job here. You guys are all nice guys. That's just one of his favorite things. You guys are all nice guys. Uh, country club mother, bleep, 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 bleep. And then that was it. He just walked out. <laughs> he just leaves you with that. He just like, he just sits you in the locker room and we're all just looking at each other like. <laughs> All right, there, and th there was no like bring it in or anything. It was uh, that was it. He just walked out, um, and like uh, that was him. You know what I mean? Like he, we, we were all nice guys. So like that, he does like hit the nail on his he, head right there. But uh, <laughs> he let it tell you. He let it tell you about what country club he was from for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was the thing, right? I mean, he he developed dudes like that. That would not again. I said this at the intro, but he got high character dudes, like all you guys. I mean, I know a lot of you. I know a lot of other dudes that, that, that came into the Notre Dame program. He's not taking a, a, a risk on any guys character wise. He's taking high character dudes, but he's developing you as people and, and as players. Like he's not getting the five stars generally. You know, Pat Conton, great example around me. You know, nobody really wanted him until the end. Um, so I think that that's something that needs to be said as well is, is just, you know, again, what, what he did, he wasn't getting those Duke Carolina, uh, players talent wise, no disrespect to you guys. Um, but, but he developed, you guys got the most out of a lot of you, you played together, you played a fun style to watch other than when he would take the air out of the ball. That wasn't so fun for me to watch. Hey, you know, Jeff. Jeff, he, uh. He, uh, he had a lot of good guys, but we, we would, you know, every now and then get in some trouble. And, and one story I wanted to tell was uh, one summer, a couple guys got in some trouble, blah, 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 you know, how that happens. And so he decides, you know, we're going to come in and run the next morning. So he brings everybody in, lines us up, and he really doesn't like running guys. He really doesn't. You know, he's big on saving legs and all that good stuff, but it's the summer. So, and he's mad at us. So he's going to run us. So he goes down the line, each guy. Starts with the first guy, you country club, you know, MFR, blah, 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 rips that guy for like 30, 40 seconds, blows the whistle. You know, you run your, I don't remember if it was a, you know, a, a suicide, a down and back, I don't remember, but it was, you know, you had to run. Goes to the next guy. He goes all the way down, you know, 10, 12 guys and gets to the end and everyone's like, oh, thank God we're done. He turns around and this was the year I was rehabbing. I was just coming off my knee. So I'm in the back of the gym, down in the pit behind him. And he forgot about me. So I'm riding the bike, you know, blah, 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 you know, watching all these dudes run. And he turns around and he goes, oh, Lance MF and Armstrong over here. <laughs> and then just rips me for like 30 seconds, turns around, tells them all, get back on the line. And they run again. So he, he like they said, he had some great one-liners. He, he'd come after you. But the best is that they were great stories because you'd go in the locker room and we were just, we started laughing about what he said. Um, and it was it was a great way that he got us to to kind of bond as well as over his humor. And if if I can jump in real quick, Jeff, kind of to your point, because um, I think it's really important, especially, um, you know, in the current culture of college basketball and with some of the things that I think we've all seen in the news. I think it's really important, um, you know, that that the 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 high character point be be mentioned, because in my experience, um, that's what that's what makes uh, your your life as a student athlete. That's what makes your life really as an athlete. Period. Um, I've had the chance to work with guys who go play pro, work with guys who are NBA guys, and they always talk about their experience in college basketball. And I think 
Coach Bray's emphasis on um, bringing in great teammates and having guys who are great guys share the locker room with you, to me, is what makes an experience that lasts a lifetime, that changes people's lives, that, that like Jordan has spoken to, connects us all still to this day to where there's a lot of guys who I never played with, a lot of guys who I never um, shared the locker room with, who I have a relationship with because we have that common bond. And if you look across college basketball, that's something that is becoming harder and harder to achieve um, with just how, you know, how it is with the transfer portal, how it is with we've spoken about NIL. Um, and I just think, you know, we can all sort of share that sort of uh, lifelong experience. And to me, that's something that that obviously he's, you know, the Elite Eight speak for themselves. The wins speak for themselves. You know, the, the Big East back in the day was one of the best conferences in the history of college basketball. And, you know, he he we we had teams that 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 threw punch for punch with some of the best of them, point blank, period. Um, and all those things are incredible. I believe that the way we are and how we share as a family and the, the guys that you've shared the locker room with, to me, that always has meant more to me. Um, and there's guys who, are, who have been way better players than me on this call, guys who have been way better players than me, you know, as teammates and, and boys. But one thing that I love is like this summer, Jaron Grant, Zach August. Um, you know, guys who I play with who, who, who have done incredible things in their careers, we all get together and we go to Vegas and we have a good time in Vegas and we, we catch up and we don't talk anything about basketball. We laugh and we, we, we make jokes about the stuff and our experience and things we did together. And to me, that will always go far and beyond because there's a lot of guys who win games, a lot of guys who put up stats, there's a lot of guys that do all those things but you don't share experiences with incredible teammates and incredible uh, men um, like I think all the guys on this call can, can attest to. So to me, that's a, that's a major point, Jeff. I think it's, it's certainly worth mentioning, especially in well, today's like you culture. Said, listen, he, he treated everybody the same. Like that's Mike Bray. Like I was a young dude breaking in as a recruiting guy, some slop dick recruiting guy that nobody gave a shit about. Mike Bray was great to me from the day I came in till the day I left. And you know what? There were times I had to criticize Mike Bray. There were times I had to. And you know what? He'd come back. He was like, I get it. I get it. Like, take ch like if I'm not winning, you've got to be honest. Like, how many guys? That was Mike Bray. No BS. No bullshit with Mike Bray. And that's why, as a media person, I have the ultimate respect for him. He did it the right way. He didn't cheat. We know that, right? He won at a high level without cheating. That's hard to do in the, the day and age prior nil all right who who luke let's get let's get to the people we only got about 10 minutes left here let's get to sure. the people that haven't spoke that want to speak um luke go ahead what do you got we've given you enough time to get going in that in that head of yours here all right well first of all and um i'm playing catch up here um i think i could probably speak for this entire group uh you know, this is this is a sad this is a sad moment I think for all of us because we were so spoiled and you know Jordan mentioned 23 years at <laughs> at one university is a major milestone and I think we took it for granted a little bit that every time we came back to campus the fact that you know our guy was still there you know he was there either we were you know we could have a drink with him we go sit in his office you know. There was a time last year, you know, where things are, excuse me, two years ago, where things weren't going great. The student section was on them. And myself, Colin Falls, Kieran Pillar, we all went and, you know, we just sat with him and talked. And you know, every time you're with him, it's like, you know, you were, it was just your freshman year. It was great to be back with him and just tell old stories. A lot of stories we can't tell on this platform, like I said, but, uh, and someone stopped me if they've already told this story. Um, NCAA tournament in Denver when he wrote, uh, on the floor, anyone tell that one? Yeah. All right, uh, so my sophomore year, we are playing opening round at the Pepsi Center in Denver. We are playing George Mason first round and right before the game goes on one of his famous, you know, rants, he gets, you know, everybody's going F this, F that, F this, this is, you know, this is our effing house. And he asked the manager to throw him uh, a Sharpie. So he throws him a Sharpie and right, right. We're in a huddle right before the game on the, you know, remember when you, I mean, a team still do it. You put the chairs around little folding chairs right on the floor. He writes, 
at the time they were it was still the Joyce Center where he says and he wrote Joyce Center West in big block letters you know because this was our house and he didn't realize one of the managers had thrown him a permanent marker so we won the game but afterwards, there was a big discussion because they had to remove the floorboards uh, to take Je- uh, Joy Center West off the Pepsi Center floor for the, our next game, which we then lost to Washington State in a terrible fashion. That's pretty good. Uh, Karen, what do you got? You've been listening uh, intently here for a while. What do you got that people haven't talked about? Well, for the, tell for the, tell for the, for the, for the humor of the bond of everyone, um, you know, I got a text from Colin Falls on this thing saying I don't deserve to be on the call because I'm a walk-on. So, uh, you know, which, which, which he's right and I agree with. Um, but, Jeff, you but, know. But kinda... that's the beauty. Wait, Karen, yeah. before you go on, isn't that the beauty of Mike Bray, though, that, again, walk-on, best player, he probably, maybe he didn't treat you exactly the same, but probably. Well, no, that's the story. I was just kind of kind of keeping, you know, with what you were saying on how he treated everyone great. Is I, I still have a great relationship to him with this day, 20 years later. Um, you know, I think when I was there, obviously I was doing nothing to help on the court, but he still valued me. We still had a great relationship. I remember when I was applying to law schools and everything, I was just kind of doing my own thing, um, not really keeping him in the loop on it. And he called me in his office and he was he was upset that I wasn't, using him as a resource and he found out where I wanted to go and he acted as my agent he was finding somebody at every school and calling them um you know now me and 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 Kyle McElarney um you know are at Priority Sports we're NBA agents you know Coach Bray set that up for me he's the one that introduced me to uh Mark Bartlestein who owns Priority Sports um without me even asking to he, 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 he upset the whole thing up. So he's, he's, he's really looked out for me for my, you know, entire life. He's the reason I'm in the career that I'm in. Um, and he didn't have to do any of that by any stretch of the imagination. So I think, you know, you obviously have your story breaking in, but I think a lot of people who are in this industry and who built careers, um, you know, he's, he's, he's helped in a big way. Chris Murphy, you've been on here for a while. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would add to – it's fitting for Falls to, to make a comment about uh, Karen and I being on here as fellow walk-ons, but he's too cool to be on this call, right? Where's Falls at? Is he on here? No, oh, he's not on here. Uh, he's on a group yeah. chat no, right but, now getting a play-by-play, though, while he's in a meeting. So he's, he's still commenting. Yeah. You know, it was, it was fitting. Last night I sent this text around to a couple of the guys last night. I actually had the opportunity – uh cqs in dallas uh the heat are playing the maps tomorrow night so we had a couple beers last night and um honestly just felt fortunate to be able to be with a teammate on a day when something like this breaks and um we just chopped it up for a little bit and um you know what i would say about coach bray he he gave me an opportunity for me uh to have tremendous success in business just from the fact that walk into a room and there's a brotherhood of just you know uh, hey, you know, played Notre Dame hoops. Uh, and, you know, I didn't share the floor very much, at least not during games, but during practices or, uh, but it was, um, it was good to just, you know, I think it's special to have a connection with a program for 20 plus years. And it's a, uh, I echo what Luke said, it's a sad day uh, when he won't be there. And I certainly think that, you know, I think everybody on this call hopes that, you know, whoever steps into that role next, we can have the same type of connection um, that we've had with Coach Bray, you know, whether you were number one on the, you know, you're an All-American like Maddie, or you were number 12 on the bench like myself, uh, Coach cared for people and I think developed men. And I think that's going to be his legacy is his character development. And frankly, I think everyone talks about him having fun, but man, we won a lot too, right? Like 181% of his games in the, in the, uh, in the pavilion, in the Jack. And so, um, you know, sad day, but, you know, love Coach Bray and, uh, appreciate the opportunity he gave me personally. All right, we're, we're going to wrap it. Bit, bittersweet, you know, I think, Luke, you're right. I mean, we kind of went through all this and we forgot about that, that it's it's sad in a way. It, it really is sad that I'm not going to see Mike Bray on the AU circuit at games. Very bittersweet. I'm happy for him that he gets to go out and enjoy, um, you know, 63 He's got, you know, hopefully 30 years on the beach now. Uh, that's a lot of beers to consume. 
I, I want to end with one one thing though. I want to end the pod this way. One word from everybody going around the room to describe Mike Brown. I know it's not easy. I'll start. For me, it's class. Class. That's what describes Mike Bray to me more than anything else. Uh, let's kind of go the, around the room and everybody can jump in here. Just one word, if you can keep it to that. I know it's not easy to describe Mike Bray. Easy. Humble. Swaggy. <laughs> I would say genuine. That was mine, boy. Joyful. Yeah, Moose took mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll say, uh, I'll say, coach. What else we got? Anybody I else? Don't, I don't know who's. I don't know who said joyful, but joyful would be mine. Joyful every day, every day. Funny. Can I, can I just ask? I mean, no shit he was a coach, Maddie. You got anything else? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? He, hey, he's our, he's our coach, man. He's our coach. Oh, Leave great. it there. It covers it. I'd go with uh, – I'd go with awesome. Anybody else who hasn't thrown one out? Otherwise, I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to wrap it right here because I think that was a uh, – Pretty good way to, to finish this thing off and, and kind of pay tribute to, to me, one of the greatest coaches, one of the greatest people that this sport has ever seen. Uh, I don't know if you saw my tweet, um, but to me, he'd be great to run college basketball. I know he wouldn't do it. Maybe from the beach he would do it, but he'd be, he'd be great at it because he would make the sport a whole hell of a lot better uh, if Charlie Baker, the new president of the NCAA, uh, went after him. You got to pay him a lot of money, a lot of money to be able to do that. But well, Jeff, anyway. if I can interject and say thank yeah. you, man. Thank you for getting all of us on here. Uh, it's great to see my brothers. I love all you guys. I know that love's reciprocated amongst everybody. Uh, Coach said in his one of his last pressers before the retirement, re announcing the retirement, uh, he was kind of upset, but he said, I've spoiled a lot of people. Uh, I think that's accurate. Coach has spoiled a lot of people. Spoiled players, spoiled coaches around him, uh, spoiled the university with the overachieving. So, Coach, we appreciate you, man. And I love all you guys on here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Love guys. You, bro. Really appreciate you guys coming on, taking the time to do it. Uh, I'm glad we did it for him. I'll make sure it gets to him as well. Um, and uh, anything you guys need, just let me know, all right? Love you, Coach. Thanks, Jeff. Love you, Coach. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Jeff. Appreciate it, Jeff. Hey, Thanks, guys. guys. Good seeing all of you. Guys, while everybody's hey, still on guys. here, while everybody's still on here, free, feel free to text me, but I'm trying to get everybody back for that March 1 game. It's his last home game versus Pitt it's a Wednesday so it may not be easy just text me on the side you guys if you could potentially make it you want to bring wives kids want to do a solo thing and just the fellas let me know what would work it's a Wednesday night March 1st Notre Dame hosted Pitt 7 o'clock let me know